Hi folks, welcome uh, to the first Weekly Notebook Review, officially behind the uh, behind the, the curtain of Hedgeye, but we'll let some folks trickle in. Obviously, a uh, should be a fun night. Hey there, Robert. Gavin, my man, how are you? Very good, man. Hey, I just wanted to say uh, congrats, man. I'm, I'm very happy for you to hear this news. Very, very cool. Uh, I, I appreciate that very much, uh, and I'm. It's uh, it's been a fun journey, and and one that I know you have been right alongside me. You know, we've both uh, come a long way since we we just were putting down numbers and hunting through the macro markets in our own little for our own little PAs, right, Gavin? Uh- <laughs> for sure, man. Yeah, but uh, real happy for you, man. It's awesome. I saw the. A note about uh, the little man. Is he all right? He was getting an x-ray. That's right. Yeah. So uh, picked him up from after school care and uh, then ice pack on his on his on his ankle and could put any weight on it. And he's he's a pretty tough cookie when he uh, when he kind of is in pain. He's, he, I know something's up. Right. So uh, I kind of immediately realized that we needed to go get an x-ray. And uh, so I'm just he's five. So like the growth plates are still very wide. So they couldn't see a break, but they suspect it's kind of like a hairline fracture. Uh, so they're going to splint him up. Um, we have a boot from he, he had a similar thing happen uh, last time this year, actually. Uh, and so, uh, so, uh, so we have a boot. So he'll probably get put in a boot, and we'll take him to the orthopedist tomorrow. But uh, appreciate it. Just uh, you know, life comes at you fast, though. You know, uh, where I was in preparation mode, getting ready for tonight, and just uh, take a little sidetrack, but. The wife tagged in and, and allowed me to kind of get back here so we could uh, go live and, and jump into this uh, notebook review. So uh, I got to give uh, huge props to my my better half. She is uh, definitely allowing this to get go smoothly and on time. All right, so we got uh, a lot of listeners listeners in there. I see coaches out in the uh, in listen mode. He did. Uh, I saw your tweet, buddy. So thank you for that. Uh, Cause I don't know if I would have gone into my email uh, right before this. So um, I'm getting used to these new, uh, these new features. Uh, <laughs> so uh, he did send me over some of his top re uh, you know, his top, excuse me, um, re-rank in terms of the short side. He did, uh, you know, interestingly enough, he's a uh, minus 10.2% net short in his long short book. And uh, I've got his top 10. So I'll get into that uh, in a little bit, but just wanted to, to thank you, Keith, for sending that along. Obviously this is one of the, uh, beautiful aspects of now being a part of the Hedgeye team. And, you know, when we started this journey back in uh, November of 2021, it was really because Gavin and I and, and a few others, like like Other Side and, and Jimmy Runs Money and, and stuff like that, we were kind of, uh, you know, just all going through the notebook on a Wednesday evening and we're sending out tweets in terms of some of the things that were jumping off the page to us. And so we had the, or I guess, I had the brilliant idea to try to corral us into a spaces session. And that was when they kind of first began recordings weren't really, it weren't even available. And, you know, here we are, you know, about, uh, you know, 10, 11 months later. And, you know, we, I, I'm humbled and honored to, to be able to uh, call myself a, a hedge eye employee now and be part of the team, part of the team that certainly has changed my life since I joined in, um, uh, you know, signed up in, in March, uh, I guess it was March, April of 2020. And just has, uh, I've always been, you know, my background, as many of you know, is institutional um, sales and trading and, and equity research. And then moved over to the software side of things, selling into the investment management and wealth management space. But uh, you know, it's, uh, it's definitely, we're, we're, we got the old wall in our sights and I'm, uh, I'm super keen to, uh, just take what we've done here in, in, you know, my small little world of spaces and, and with many of you phenomenal listeners, supporters, I mean, the outpouring of support has been incredible. Uh, so I just want to thank all of you, you guys, without you and without Hedge Ed Nation, you know, this really wouldn't even uh, have transpired. So I just want to, uh, you know, first and foremost, thank, thank all the listeners and supporters out there. Uh, and, and I'm, I'm I can't wait to for some of these, you know, not only ideas that I have, but ideas that I know Michael on and Michael, uh, Michael and Keith and, and Dan Holland, you know, that they have for, for this, uh, you know, for new content, new head, uh, you know, new content for Hedgeye TV. You know, if you're not a subscriber to the YouTube channel, um, I would highly recommend that. 
you know, we're going to be doing some live streams and, and some sort of impromptu stuff at, at the, you know, through that hedge eye um, YouTube channel. So, you know, definitely go subscribe and, and like, and, you know, for instance, this, um, you know, we're going to kind of turn this into a podcast now too, right? So you can listen live, encourage you all to kind of be live and interactive, but, you know, you'll be able to get the replays uh, both through the YouTube channel as well as, uh, you know, multiple podcast avenues as well. So, uh, you know, that's one of the beauties of having the firepower of Hedge Eye is I get to, uh, you know, eventually, you know, I'll know I'll made it when I get to yell out, Genron, you know, can we pull up that slide, please? Uh, that's when I'll know I've, I've made it. Uh, but yeah, so it's going to be, it's going to be incredible. I'm, I'm very, very excited. And again, just want to, you know, send out all my thanks and, and love to all of you guys listening in and supporting All right, so now that that's kind of out of the way, we'll uh, let's get into the notebook. Uh, so, Gavin, what what's jumping out at you? I saw that tweet. I think he said earlier, kind of same thing, same old, same old as last week, or the same sort of thoughts as as last week going into this evening. But maybe we can remind people what uh, what that what that might be. Yeah, man. I mean, I, across the asset classes, I mean, it's pretty. Um, you know, for me, it's like what's driving everything, what's out in front the dollar. Currencies are pretty clear to me. Uh, short stocks is pretty clear. Short bonds is pretty clear. Um, and then the question mark that I've had for a few weeks now, and it's just kind of been dancing, is just um, energy. And so I'm kind of looking to to see how that's going to resolve. And um you know, because I'm, I'm interested. I think that's a pretty big component of what's going on, right? I guess that's a pretty simple thing to say, but inflation. So, um, but yeah, in the notebook, I'm, I'm just kind of noticing over the last few days, kind of like a general tightening of ranges, uh, you know, like in, in VIX and then uh, dollar and uh, gold and um, 10 year. And, uh, you know, so, you know, I think that's kind of interesting to, I like to see like the notebook kind of, you know, all kind, kind of moving together as one big signal. So I don't know if you've seen that too, but that's what I've kind of been tracking recently. Yeah, no, I definitely, I spot on and i think one of the things that's kind of jumping out at me and and coach uh, alluded to it a bit this morning in terms of uh the slight divergence right between you know things like xle or xop you know some of these like uh commodity uh equities versus the actual commodities themselves um and i think that's been something that certainly has jumped off the page in uh in the last week or so you know ever since kind of copper went you know a, a number of them went you know bullish trade but certainly couldn't hold that and that was a, a big a big thing to, to me this morning in, in in the notebook along with um you know the 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 moves and the risk ranges for the uh you know 10 year 30 year two year on the u.s side i mean it's been incredible right like just the the higher um the higher lows that have been putting in. I mean, there's some big time higher lows just even from the difference between, you know, Monday's, you know, risk range on say the 30 year, which was, you know, three, three spot six, five to today, which is three, three spot seven, six. I mean, you know, that, that's um, obviously, you know, is predicated on, on where the move is living these days. Right, Gavin. But I mean, that's a big time, you know, big time um, higher low. And the, the top end of that curve isn't quite as extreme, but certainly is moving higher as well. So, uh, you know, Keith mentioned that in the macro show. If, if you didn't catch that today, I'd highly recommend it in terms of, um, you know, just reviewing sort of, you know, his, his take and, and, and our hedge eye view. Oh, man, that feels good to say our hedge eye view, uh, our hedge eye view um, of where kind of uh, rates are going. We've been, you know, been staying away from them for, for, for a few months now and, and just how, you know, where kind of real rates, um, you know, that's the real thing too. You know, the, the real rates is I've got a key, keen eye on that, eh, Gavin, in terms of trying to, again, it's not really, it's not obviously predicting or anything like that, but just, you know, gold's bound to at some point sort of, try to revive itself here but it obviously trades with real rates and and those real rates are just uh going in the opposite direction that the in terms of favoring you know any type of gold exposure or, or that kind of thing and in fact you know silver just completely broke down right i mean folks basically ch chased it 
um, just, uh, what was that, probably two weeks ago. I think it was around, let me pull up the futures here, um, around 20, yeah, around 21 uh, earlier this month. And it's just absolutely kind of uh, could not break out. That was certainly something that I was paying attention to and even called out even just uh, last week or so. You know, I was uh, I said I, I thought silver was a good good place to sort of maybe put some capital. And, and boy, was I uh, was I wrong. So uh, definitely, definitely got a little egg on my face on that one. But you can't win them all. Right. So, <laughs> yeah, I think it's like, you know, what Keith was saying too this morning about silver just being a commodity and it's like from that's why the that's why that's my open question is like they're the commodity picture is just not that clear to me there's some things that are strong there's some things that are a lot of things that are weak and it's just not a very clear picture where so yeah no i hear you and that energy stock thing is that that keith was mentioning i guess this morning or whenever it was but um you know, it, it seems like, I, I mean, so I know some of the big banks came into like Q3, uh, or I'm sorry, uh, where we are right now, Q4, I think like overweight energy, uh, like a lot of people know about that. And maybe it's like the safety trade going into earnings. Like Keith, I Keith, maybe Keith said that or something like people know that that's where maybe it's the safest right now. If you have to be long stocks or something like that. So people are going to crowd in there. I don't know. I, so, I, I I don't know either. All I know is that that signal keeps putting in a high or low, you know, <laughs> and and the top end yeah, it's strong, and, and the top end keeps on creeping up, right? So you know, it's it's you know it's pulling in a little bit. Some of that volatility is coming out of it. Uh, you know, XLE. You know, the, the no, let me pull it up. Sorry. Um, yeah, I mean that that the top end of the risk range. I mean, it blew through today, right? It was one of the only few that and and comms. So XLC were, were the only kind of two sectors um, from in the U S that were, that were green and certainly on a one month and three month basis, XLE is the, you know, again, whether you, you want to believe it or not, uh, you know, part of our you know process and, and how we allocate capital is, is uh, not fighting the signal and, and kind of, you know, lead, again, it's, it's, it's momentum, you know, it's going where the momentum is and where the market is telling you, uh, you know, capital allocation should be, should, you know, there's there's room to run there there's momentum right so uh when you see green across the board in terms of a one day one week one month three months six month year to date one year let me see if that three year even the three years up 77 point spot three five percent right so you know it's not um i'd say it's kind of infrequent that you get uh, green positive green across the board but um definitely something that you know it's, it's hard to ignore and, and again we're at the top end of the risk range so you all know what to do. And, and if you're new to Hedge Eye Nation and, and, and the process, then i um, happy to help out, happy to coach. Um, you know, we've got Hedge Eye University that's that's there at your disposal. So so go review that. But um, one of the one of the first principles you should uh, you should know is, uh, you know, don't don't chase and don't you're a seller at the top end of the risk range and, and you're, you're typically a buyer, you know, a buyer on red if it's uh, still bullish trade and trend. So, um, you know, that's a, that's a pretty straightforward one, kind of like PFIX the other day. I I think uh, it was a, a question on the macro show was kind of all about PFIX, but it was blown through the top end of the risk range. So, you know, I hope uh, hope nobody's got any any more questions on XLE tomorrow on the macro show because uh, you should have been, you know, a uh, a, a potential buyer um, or adding some to to your asset allocation on red, you know, earlier this week or on Friday, and you should have been the seller today um, on green at the top end of the risk range. So, um, but yeah, but with that, I'll uh, pass it off to to other side uh, asset management. Welcome, my friend. Hey, brother. How you doing? I'm doing well, my man. <laughs> so proud of you. Congratulations. Oh, I appreciate uh, um, it. I, I, I'm super proud. Um, so I, I think what Gavin, if, if I've learned one thing from Gavin, it's, and I don't want to put words in his mouth, but he's always, well, he's, he's usually talking about how strong certain signals are and to follow the strong signals, right? So, there are so many, there are a handful of signals that just keep pushing higher, uh, short yen that, uh, I, a couple, uh, a week and a half ago, I actually, I, I, I guess one of my larger mistakes this year, a, a lot of, a lot of us made a, a similar mistake was, you know, over, overstaying your welcome a little too much in bonds earlier in the year. And, you know, we were fighting the signal to an extent. So I'm, I'm much more keen on the signal. You know, I, I have a short proxy on bonds right now and it's, it's been crushing it. Um, you know, so I'm, I'm focused on signals 
uh, I think Syracuse is going to be happy. Did, did I see the thirty or the three month and the ten year invert today, or, or am I mistaken? Let me uh, let me see where it finished. I, I was tracking that for a minute. I, that was, I, uh, it was a four hundred four to a four hundred one at one point in time, but that might it might not have finished that way. But I think there was an inversion there for a while. Um, uh, I, I could have sworn I saw that. Um, didn't didn't quite make it on. The, you said the three month, right? Three month and the ten year. Yeah, didn't quite make it. Didn't quite make it. We're close though. Spot two three seven. You sure it didn't make it for for um, a, a, even a time frame or no? I don't think so. No, we uh, we haven't put new lows. All right. I was on the phone with some people this morning and they were it was up in the air and they were like we were debating it and I was like what the hell are we even talking about? Like, I, don't, <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean, but no, I think I, some people it in wrong, but I don't think so. No, but some people's data they were seeing it as like inverted, and yeah, yeah, everyone was like calling it out. I think it depends on what what data flow you were seeing, it, but um, the, the the signals there we we touched on it, but four hundred eight, four hundred eight uh, on the thirty and the ten. I mean, you're you're getting close to a, a an inversion there with the ten and the thirty year. Uh, well, you're I mean super- the loan of the- yeah, I mean the, the the loan of the two year can only get to four spot one two, you know. Yeah. So I mean, it's not even cl- yeah. It's well, you, you, the the math is telling you that an inversion, you know, regardless, that, even even if the two year goes to its you know, you know bottom of the risk range, it's uh, uh, yeah. Again, it's just it it's yeah. it's typically it, it's it it's large in part what Keith was hitting on, uh, it was has hit on the past couple of days, most all but equities is telling you the same story. And those signals just keep getting stronger. So my positions, I, I, my position sizing in the things with the strongest signals that I see outside of equities is where I'm more focused than ever before. Um, you know, the, the dollar trade, the short yen, the short euro uh, on the dollar signal, the uh, uh, I'm short, uh, short bonds right now, which was a great trade. P-fix was crushing it today up four and almost five percent i mean it, this just stick with the signal strength I, I i would say it's if it's one thing i learned this year stick with the signal strength yeah ride, ride your winners right and cut your losers yeah yeah i like that thought mitchell and uh yeah it's it's um you know like for me i, I mean essentially this year i've been like a currency trader because <laughs> I'll just like in my notebook right now, every day I write down like my priority list. And it's like the one thing that I can't miss on is currencies because they're yep. out in front. And it's like I can do a lot. And especially, I mean, you know, the vol of like the, the British pound is like there's yep. more volatility there than like a consumer staple stock right now. I mean, <laughs> it's crazy, like right? it's not like it's, it's that, crazy. It's not yeah. like it's that lame. I mean, it's still pretty lame, I guess. You know, for you guys whipping around with the single stocks, but I don't do that. So, but, but anyway, get, getting back to your point about the signal strength, it's like, well, there's so much good signal there that it's like, yep. I have to at least be long the dollar, short the euro, short the yen. Yep. And, uh, and doing that really well. And if I just focus on that and get that right, then I'm doing that. And then we'll see what else, you know, happens. But that's like at the top of the list. Yeah. The, the, yeah. Sorry, so Rob. No, sorry. This is slightly off topic. I apologize. I'm taking you back to commodities. So keep keep running with FX. No, no, no. I, just to tag off of Gavin, I mean, I, that's diff- it For somebody who was primarily, you know, equities or ETF, you know, equities or equity ETF driven or, or you know, you, you go to different places, but it, you were, you're, I was always more focused on the other stuff, right? So but like what Gavin's saying in terms of signal strength, it's forced me to actually be much more focused on certain things that would normally be outside of the box, right? So, you know, where Keith is always talking about a go anywhere strategy, and not everybody can go everywhere, but you can find proxies to get most places, right? It, it, don't be afraid to go to those places that have the strongest signal strength because those are the things that keep working. And it just seems like, you know, it seems like the the strength is showing you where to go if you're listening loud enough. And I think that's what's helped me, you know, over the helped me more over the last, you know, handful of months than anything 
is going to where that signal strength is and being more confident from a position sizing standpoint to do it. Yeah. So, <clears throat> you know, I'm, I'm now blessed with having uh, Richie uh, send me a bunch of data, which is really freaking oh, cool, yeah. by the way. Uh, <laughs> honestly, guys, he's like he's like a little wizard. Um, it's amazing. Uh, so, but you know, if you're looking kind of the the ETF daily rank, you know, or even kind of going back on a on a monthly basis, right? So you're looking at kind of trade duration, you know, three month or more is, is trend. I mean, today's top twenty are basically primarily all commodity related um exposure you know it's you've got you know, at the top of the list list was uh, pxj pxj which is oil and gas equipment and services right and, you know, from, um then you know a couple you know number three you got nat gas producers and, and fcg uh next up was you know gasoline the uga right but you go down to like number 20 it's saudi arabia you know united arab emirates you know uae K, ksa um, so again, it's like in everything in between, if you go kind of pull up the list across multiple ETFs, you're going to see a theme there certainly today. And if you kind of extrapolate it further to sort of a one month basis or, or even three months, those are all going to rank pretty high up there. And, and, and the dollar, you know, on a one month basis is number 10 and on a three month basis is number 10. And, and that's going up against massively high beta, right. You know, um, ETF exposure or, or certainly on a relative basis and, and, and your dollar is still, you know, a, a top player in terms of, uh, on, on both the trade and trend. Then you go year to date and it's number 11. You know, so like the dollar is not, you know, we've talked about this, you know, ever since we were heading into quad fours, you know, and, and that, that was the call in kind of December and early January, you know, that the, the dollar exposure was, was something that we're going to kind of ride out. And if you stuck with it, it's been an absolute um, striker uh, on, on your team and a, and a great performer. And, and uh, it's been, yeah. So, I mean, uh, did I tie that in nicely between commodities and going back to FX? I think, I think that was pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. All right. That was a good one. I like that one. All right, George, your floor is yours, my man. So Mitchell, thank you for the shout out as a data purist, the uh, 10 year versus three month relationship has yielded the, uh, you know, I guess the highest signal reliability with impending recession. If you go to the federal reserve website, which you just have to type in Fred, um, they're showing that on October 18th, we inverted by three basis points. I didn't see it during the day. So it's possible like right at the close or, you know, whenever they captured the data, it had happened. So if anyone has more color on that, I'd actually be interested to find out the discrepancy there. And then, you know, adding on to what both Gavin and Mitchell said, as far as what's interesting this week or what I came into the week looking for was, you know, I had this weird sneaking suspicion that maybe the rates market, the bond market was front running, you know, like a return to bullish trend and the commodities, particularly the uh, energy inputs. And then when they fail and rates go even higher, I'm thinking more, it's, it must be more of kind of like a currency thing and something to do with, uh, you know, who the, the why doesn't really matter. You know, the, the data is what matters. But the Forex and the dollar strength and the rise in rates is, is not to be ignored. And, you know, I, I learned from me and my mistakes at the beginning of the year. I was too stubborn with being over allocated to uh, fixed income, treasuries in particular, and then learned my lesson and changed. And uh, thank you, Robert, for PFIX. Um, I'm happy to say that when we added it back on August the 11th, I have not fed the ducks at all i have held hold to the entire amount of it granted i still have you know a little bit of uh bndd and ief that i should have just never even have had and just have kept pfix alone by itself and you know largest allocation to uup with the u.s dollar strength so when in doubt the signal is your friend and don't fall in love and uh good luck everybody quad four is uh a beast. Yeah, another one that's holding in from a signal strength standpoint, just speaking of kind of PFIX and, and even you know, FX and, and a bit of commodities because it, it, it sort of uh, is focused on that would be that CTA, right? So that's been a really good uh, performer. I know it's in um, it's in the ETF Pro. Uh, it's, it's in there, right? So you get the, the risk range for that on a weekly basis. 
you know, from Hedgeye, from the ETF Pro uh, product. It's in there along with PFIX, as, as you were saying. Um, oh, and everyone, please feel free to chirp Plunge Protection Team and his uh, <laughs> devoutness to the 10-year versus three-month where Daniel DiMartino Booth and more people in our camp uh, had it right from the get-go. Yeah. The 10-year, two-year uh, led the way. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but just, uh, I just want to call Don't get mad at me. Just friendly. If he listens to this. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Totally. Um, all right. Well, we got some new folks up as well. So Al or management, was there anything that you guys, uh, wanted to kind of call out from the, from the notebook standpoint? Hey, Hey Robert. Uh, oh, go ahead. Oh. I will go right ahead. Um, I'm going to mute. Okay. Hey, thanks guys. So Absolutely. while we're on the currency front, um, you know, we, we got an RTA a couple of weeks ago to short Mexico. And um, and that was great because I made a few bucks shorting Mexico. Um, but I took a look at the peso and the peso, the peso was looking pretty brownian. And, you know, most of the country ETFs that we've been selling with great success this year have been matched with weakening currencies. And I was wondering, you know, Robert, now that you got uh, now that you got the keys to some of this stuff, oh, uh, you know, what what does the vol signal look like on the peso? And you know, I mean, they they raise their rates to over nine percent down there. Um, if the if the equity market there is weakening, does that mean that the um, the peso is p- potentially going to fall out of bed? And you know, how can we keep a uh, keep an eye on that? Because um, you know, the, the similar sets, whether it's Canada or Europe or Korea or what have you, uh, you know, would suggest that eventually the peso is going to crack. Yeah. And um, just to clarify that I don't get a, a thousand d- d- DMs asking for uh, this risk range or that risk range. Uh, Keith likes me. He doesn't like me that much. Uh, so, um, uh, I'm, just, I'm just throwing well, it least, out there because it was, at least not you yet. know, at least not a yet. non-similar you know, never, set. <laughs> never say never, but at least not yet. Um, so yeah, so that that that's still a, a, a mucker product right there. Um, but in terms of what I can tell you uh, from a you know from a you know U.S. dollar, uh, Mexican peso, or, or however you want to look at it, Mexican peso to USD. Um, you're right. You know the 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 certainly weakness in the currencies have have, uh, have kind of helped. You know those ETFs that that we have been shorting on from the U.S. side, right? So for instance, the the the, the euro. And its weakness obviously just um, compounds the weakness and the the relative weakness in mm-hmm. in the uh, underlying indices as well, right? So, um, from that perspective, yeah, I mean, I think you know, EWW, you know, still absolutely, you know, um, certainly would appear and, and certainly is on the page in terms of ETF Pro, is bearish, uh, um, you know, bear, bearish trading trend, and and things still look the same there from a Mexican peso standpoint. You're right, that is actually I haven't looked at that in the, in, the, in a minute. It's held in pretty nicely. Um, so, you know, I don't know. I don't really have a good answer for you there, Al. I think maybe a little time and space and just to kind of see where it goes. But um, it definitely on a kind of one month basis looks like uh, by the end, you know, kind of middle of next week, some of those lows are going to fall fall out or sort of I'm looking at the Mexican peso to, to, to U.S. dollar. So, you know, some of those kind of, um, you know, that weakness is going to fall out. So I, I think that's just one to watch. I would say there's not a whole lot to, to say there. Just one to watch. All right. Well, thank you, Robert. Well, you and congrats out. again, my man. Oh, thank you very much. I appreciate that. <laughs> it's uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. You know, it's uh, it's crazy. It's only, only day three, and it's it feels feels like it's been meant to be from the beginning. So it's um, I'm very very excited. Oh man, that's great. Well, yeah. hey hey, uh, before I go, there was one yep. other thing I was thinking about, and uh, you know, I, uh, I I don't have a lot of time to trade during the trading day, so. You know, when we had the, all those great speakers last week, you know, I finally got around to listening to a bunch of them on the way back from the beach on Sunday. And I happened to listen to Hugh Hendry and Danielle DiMartino Booth consecutively. And one of the, uh, you know, one of the things that, you know, Hugh in his, in his uh, I don't know, special manner was talking about was collateral. And I just wondered, you know, for, especially for people who are out there who, uh, still trade derivatives and so on. Um, you know, given that the pristine collateral in the world is U.S. Treasuries, 
and that they've been devalued so much due to rising rates and every other kind of fixed income fixed income collateral is devalued due to rising rates and widening spreads then you know what's going on with you know bank derivative books and all kinds of other things that may need to get degrossed and you know that's probably a Josh Steiner question but it's just you know something that I, I took away from that and it's it's got me uh it's got me interested and uh and, and even more bearish so all of this is trend here just to add to it there are directly uh, information tables available in the 10ks if you search them or even 10qs uh you can get directly the actual uh, weighted average duration or the nature of the asset that they have by quality by credit quality just search for those tables and bank by bank you can list that out Thanks, Wizzo. Yeah, always solid trend. Thank you very much. Our management floor is yours, my man. How are you? Welcome. Hey, I'm I'm doing okay. Thank you. Good. Um, good. <clears throat> might have had a little too much wine while I'm watching the Astros. Hopefully, pound the Yankees. Sorry, everybody. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, you you know you and you and Reed Rob should have a friendly uh, friendly wager or something like that. <laughs> I, uh, you know, I, like I said, like I think I told you uh, earlier, or, or somebody, uh, if uh, I hope MPW squeezes the hell out of Simone until the end of this series, and then it can go back down. But <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, not to take up too much time, guys. Uh, everybody's uh, got it going on. Um, you know, first of all, congrats, Robert. I didn't get a chance to Thank text you. you or talk to you today. That's just phenomenal, and. And from the looks of it, Keith is listening. And so shout out to Keith for hiring good people. And holy shit, what, a, what you have built is incredible. So shout out to you. Um, one of the things that, you know, my, my, you know from a notebook standpoint, I, I look at the, the, the yield curve. I think you know that, Robert. And mm-hmm. I spoke to Mitchell. The, the yield curve is super important. And spreads to me are one of the most important things out there. Um, the, I also looked at the Fred website and noticed that yesterday that they, they had the three month and 10 year invert. So just so you know that, that, that my firm is hanging on the three month and 10 year. And that was there. They're like, well, it hasn't inverted yet. So no recession. And I think a lot of these large banks are looking at the three month and 10 year and not as Hedge Eye pointed out, it doesn't back test as well. It doesn't even go back as far as the 10 and 2. So um, it's another feather in the cap to Hedge Eye, number one, that the 10 and 2 is a better back test than the 10 and 3 month. And, uh, you know, from a business development standpoint, it's another crutch that the that, that old wall cannot stand on. Um, because it has inverted according to the according to the government itself, which can't even bring itself to say the R word. So um, just, you know, just wanted to point that out to the community um, uh, that that the Fred website, it, you know, you can't argue with, with the government's own data, right or wrong. Um, so that's, <laughs> okay. that, you know, that is that's that my notebook is is full of that stuff. And I hope that. Uh, you know, people get, you know, shout that out from the rooftops, you know, old walls wrong again. So fuck them. Go hedge eye. Congrats, Robert. And I'm appreciate going it. back to watch the Strohs. <laughs> All right, man. No, it's good. Great call out. And I appreciate it. Uh, thank you. And, and for those, you know, I'm not, I'm not doxing him at all, but he is at, uh, he is a, a, a great um, IA um, at one of the uh, better well-known, you know, um, investment management shops. So I uh, just take that with, with, However you wish, uh, he certainly, from a compliance standpoint, can't use his own name, but he's a uh, he's a great guy, and uh, don't hold uh, don't hold the Astros uh, allegiance against him, uh, Reet Rob, if you're listening in. Um, but yeah, so I, Keith, I, I saw you came up to speak. I don't know if that was in in regards to sort of um, the comment about Hugh and Danielle, uh, but if not, then I can, I was going to move on to actually addressing your um, top ten shorts. But if you don't wish to speak, also totally cool. Oh, there you go. No, I, I'm. Uh, can you hear me, Robert? 
Yes, sir. Yep, absolutely, Keith. Hey, man. Well, hey, buddy. If I could uh, give you a high five, I would in person. But uh, <laughs> I think I'll I think I'll see you tomorrow. Um, but congrats, man. This is the way. Thank you. This is the way free market capitalism in America used to work, still works, and anybody who doubts it uh, is doubting the spirit that this country is built upon. So great people like you um, earn it, man. Uh, respect is earned. It's not allocated, at least from our perspective. And I think it's a good way to think. So congrats, man. We're, we're proud to have you on the team. I appreciate it, Keith. Thank you. Well, I just jumped on because I was, um, you know, modeling out of all the risk ranges for tomorrow, at least getting all my options reset and all my data from, uh, like you said, little, uh, little Wizzo Richie is pumping me full of data. So I got all that. And no, I'm not going to give everybody a real time risk range because Robert's on the call. So, but, but, but I did, I did, I did think the owl had a very good point there. I was just, um, I was just looking at it actually, uh, on the fly earlier, the Mexican peso, it, it actually broke trend in the last two days for the first time in a little while. So the trend is, uh, is 0 0.499 on the MXN USD. So that's interesting because um, EWW has actually turned out to be as many of you I'm surely noticed when you're, when you're thinking about your inventory on the short side and being agnostic to what it is that you're actually grossing up on the short side. And I did give Robert the updated like what what these positions are when I re-rank them, just like I show you in our Macro Pro subscription, what our re-ranked long positions are. You know, I obviously have that for shorts, but I'm not going to publish in my short book because then, you know, I'm going to have, you know, 3,000, you know, hedge fund managers for trying to front run me, squeeze me, creating, you know, who, who knows what baskets against us, which I'm not, I'm just not going to give them the ammo. Um, I could see them do it in, in single RTA, single stocks, obviously, but um but EWW has been an excellent, you know, counterfade inside of your gross short exposure. It'll quite often do the opposite of what your U.S. equity exposures do. And I do think that part of that is because the peso has been variant in terms of its volatility signal. So, so quite literally up until this week, it had relatively low vol. It would not be a currency that I would short, obviously, because it hadn't broken trend. But that's new. And it broke you know, broken the last 48 hours. So that really makes the equity side of the trade tastier or, or signal strength stronger, mm -hmm. which I think of all the things I've heard so far in terms of the discussion today, and I, I often listen in on you guys just to make sure I'm, you know, in sync with what you guys care about. Um, you know, it's different than the Q, right, Robert? The Q, the Q and A on the yeah. macro show is like, what's fucking going wrong against me today? What do I do? Like... <laughs> You can almost hear it, right? It's like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Just stop it. Um, but listening to you guys, these are like rational. You know, this is rational, right? I mean, you're thinking it through. There's a there's a, there's a, a patience. There's a pace to the discussion. Um, but, you know, that, you know, that said, like what, you know, what Gavin said, what you guys have been saying, signal strength is the number one thing you want. I mean – do you want Aaron Judge or do you want to make a call on some guy in the Yankee dugout could get hot tonight? I mean, no, you go with Aaron Judge. <laughs> like you just go, yeah. you go, yeah. you, you go with what's got strength, is trending, is trading. It's got it, it's got it all. So you know, really, the Mexican the Mexican peso has been nothing compared to the yen or the euro, for that matter, on the short side, and it could be developing into something. We'll have to see. Um, uh, it's unlikely, given given how weak uh, these these other economies are, but um, we'll see. I, I thought it was a very. I mean, it really perked up my ears here because I'm just like you know I'll, I'll go through it. I go through everything every night. It's just I think that that was a very uh, well timed call out by the owl. Yeah, agreed. There's a reason why we call him the wise old owl. Yeah. Uh, no, it, it really was because I hadn't really looked at the Mexican peso in a minute. I mean, I mean, I look at it, you know, you know what I mean, right? I haven't looked at it that hard, right? And so it's, it's, it was, uh, yeah, because I knew EWW had been working, but um, yeah, it was a very good call out. Yeah, infer wisdom at your own risk, my man. <laughs> well, you, well, you know what it is? It's, 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 it's Mandelbrot 101. It's the particular that you noticed. It's the particular thing that moves at a particular time that hasn't moved. That's why it's particular. 
And it's not the average of things or the bullshitting of things. It's the particular. And that's uh, it's a great thing. The other thing that happened tonight, guys, I was just, just finished modeling it. You'll see it tomorrow morning. But, um, the top end of the NASDAQ range just got crushed. I mean, and this is after Tesla you know, reports dog shit or bullshit. Uh, I think this is, you know, Tesla, as Mike T would have said, or I'll continue to say is, you know, top three stocks in terms of impacting the indexes and will continue to be for a while. I mean, this thing is, wow, like the top end of the risk range on the NASDAQ's inside of 11,000 for the first time. So 10,936. We'll see. We'll see how that bobs and weaves tomorrow morning. But I mean, because I do, I, I, I remodel it in the morning again. But, you know, for now. What's on? What's in the notebook? The actual notebook is 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 not a good thing. It's a good thing for yeah. us. I mean, it's it's a good thing. You know, it's good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It depends on who you are, right? And as you well, no, that's a, that, and as you that can see, that big, Robert, like in the top ten sh- shorts that I lower high. Yeah. that I sent you, uh, Q's finally moved yep. back into my top ten, and it took a while because they'd been so pulverized, and then they bounced, and then I needed that lower high. And I got it intraday, but then I really got it at the close. So we'll we'll see, you know, you know, if yeah, you know, I'm sure people are interested in that list um, in terms of how it uh, how it bobs and weaves. But you know, today, for example, coming into it, and you can go through it. I got to hop here, or at least finish yep. finish doing my work. I'll keep listening. But the um, like coming into today, to, in my top ten, you're always going to have like currency positions. You're going to have my my big ones um, on fixed income high yield and junk. Um, but it's really the question is what equities move to the top of the list and then move out of the top 10. And coming into today in my top 10, won't surprise you, were financials because I signaled on it. Uh, biotech, which I recently signaled on it. So if I signal on it in RTA, that means that I'm getting almost perfectly at the top end of the range. That's what I have to wait for. I'm not perfect, obviously. I'm imperfect at best. But that's when you get an RTA, it means that it's it's definitely probing or at the top end of the range. So those things were big, and they were both down big today. IBB, Biotech was actually the best short. It was a great day because we had PFIX on the long side, XOPXLE on the long side, and Biotech on the short side, and financials. So you know, like in, in, my, in my rightly sized ones. So, so what happens on a big day like that, and the Euro too is a, a great short today um, against dollar long. Yeah, I take them down, right? Because and then I could take something like Jets moved into my top three equity positions because it was up. So that's it's again, it's just um, just coaching you through, you know, being agnostic to what it is that is in your top positions in terms of sizing, and having the go anywhere strategy. Which again, a lot of people say, well, I don't know how you do that because I've 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 like five good ideas. My analysts worked on them, and I got to be huge in all those. Well, that's precisely not how to run money in the modern era. Like it's actually to be able to go anywhere, have the freedom to resize, regross, downsize, you know, constantly be shifting those gears, just like driving a Formula One car. So, um, you know, I just want to kind of make that point because 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 the, the order, if they get into it with you, Robert, really, it shouldn't ever be a static commentary on what are you know, right. what are what are the team's best ideas. It's like. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's just that's not what it is. And like in this this top ten again, this top ten on uh, that you shared at eight twenty two on October nineteenth is going to look you know potentially drastically different tomorrow depending on what the market that you know happens right. So for everybody listening in, this is very dynamic. Um, but Keith, again, you know, um, I heard you mention XOP on on the macro show this morning and. Um, on ETF Pro, that was actually that was removed on the sixth, just when that signal did shift. Uh, we did we did add back XLE. So so according to ETF Pro, we are long XLE, uh, but we did take XOP off. So for those listening in, you know, don't don't you know shit your pants and be like, I'm not long XOP. You know, we had been long it, we took it off the signal change, but now it's sort of you know we, we decided to add XLE back rather than XOP. So um, just just wanted to clarify for all those listening in. And uh, but on Macro Pro, I edited back. Like I mean, ETF Pro. Yeah, sorry. I'm, yes, uh, yes. Yeah. So yeah. ETF Pro is is like for thirty bucks a month. That's for like okay. Fair. Yes. Fair you enough. Know, fair it's enough, like fair it's enough. it's like tricks are for kids, and you know, you know, Mikey no likey. We can have cereal box macro, or we can actually do the real thing. And you know, you can chintz if you want, but if you really, you know, like if you really want to know what's going on, I mean, 
Macro Pro, I'm giving you quite literally the re-ranked long positions daily and even telling you what I'm buying and selling in terms of basis points of additions and subtractions. So yep. everyone saw like, you know, XOP yep. come back in and it was there, you know, it's just, so it's not like the, the yep. ET, ETF Pro, I, I review it on Sundays and I'll make the changes once those change. I, I, I have a very short, you know, a very short leash on, you know, stop losses on those things, but I... I I, I macro pro is where the actual books at like just so that everybody mm-hmm. knows yep. um which you're going to be able to obviously see daily now and in real time in house robert so that yep. that'll that i think 100%. that'll help yeah 100 percent, 100 percent, absolutely um all right so getting into top shorts just because i think everybody uh, will appreciate this um it's coming into the day we had if uh you know actually maybe i'll shoot the, you know here we go i'm gonna see you know, I'll call it Gavin or Al or whoever. Somebody take a guess. I'll say top five. Uh, you know, top five. <laughs> I'll say top five going in, going into the close at the end of the day. I'm gonna, anybody can, anybody guess. Anybody guess. There's well, no I, prizes here. This is... I just gave a bunch of hints, so you should at least get. Three yeah, yeah. Five. You should, you should, you should be able to kind of piece it together. Somebody take a guess. Uh, there's no, no wrong answers. I'm just going to be quiet. I think I was listening. I think Keith basically just said it all, right? Like, I'm not going to just cherry pick. (laughs) (laughs) All right, Gavin. That was a. So we got J and K, H Y G, uh, Jets. So in terms of equities, the top of the list is with Jets. But that, that, again, this is dynamic. So it moved, you know, EWG, you know, short, um, short Germany, have been the number one equity uh, short. But then that, you know, got moved down and uh, Jets surpassed that today. Again, directional RTA, as, as Coach just alluded to, he mm-hmm. hit the button um, on Jets. So that's the number one ETF um, equity short in the book. Then it goes the triple Qs, Germany, um, Apple. Apple is, is right in there. That was the one that I, I thought maybe folks, uh, you know, may, you know, uh, he did not, the XLK is not in there, but the Apple. So he's going straight to the wood with uh, probably w- one of the most, uh, widely held and widely owned um, uh, securities in the. Entire- That's what we call in. Uh, I think the I think the good folks in Kentucky call that a cheater horse. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's that's basically that's basically short XLK, but we're doing it juicy. Uh, and with a lot some more call it a, a teaser horse or a teaser yeah, horse. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. we're oh, trying to breed pony. a good. Yeah, the T's exactly. pony. Right. That's right. And then we got, <laughs> and then we got, and then we got small caps and IWM, and then the first, uh, first um, uh, FX, so FXE. So we got short Europe, short Italy, short uh, France. So EWI, EWQ. That's the top ten, boys and girls. Really? Yeah. See, I, I would have thought uh, BITO would have been in there because it was, it was staying kind of strong through most of the afternoon. I was like, oh man. Uh, that one's got to get whacked. But, you know, when when you hit the button on Google late in the day, I was quickly going through kind of QQQ versus uh, XLK, XLY. So, okay, so which one has the the, the biggest uh, Google holding? And it was Qs. So there oh, you yeah. go. Yep. All right. That is the – is that the owl again? That's the one. Yeah, yo. <laughs> Calling it up, man. That's great. <laughs> The, the the thing with the like Bido will uh, Bido and Block will rarely be in my top ten because I beta adjust my short positioning. So, you know, Bido's got crazy beta, right? So crazy vol, crazy beta. So it's hard for its it, it to earn its way up there. Um, another one that's hard to get into the top ten, but it's been awesome is like Poland. Um, yeah. I think okay. fr- that thing freaking rips around, but. Um, the one that I'd gotten jammed on on the, on the short side for a couple of days was J.P. Morgan, and that finally rolled over like a boss today. So that I think there there's some pretty big stocks out there that are right at the top end of the range. I mean, and they're huge components. Like what McGordy called out, he said, "Like look, look what was up today." I mean, well, comms were up today, XLC, but that's because Netflix is like you know in the top you know yeah, it's components. Like 20, of it. So yeah, I think yeah. It's, 20, it's around twenty percent. So you, the components matter, the the betas matter. It's it's always lots to pay attention to. I, I mean, Europe was a huge gift, you know, on on this most recent bounce because you don't have all the hedge funds, you know, panic and performance stricken hedge funds as I like to call them. They're you know getting whipped around all the time. I 
I think that those things too, guys, when you see a drop down U.S. close and when they fail from the top end of my range, the best thing to do is actually gross up your European shorts. I mean, equity shorts, because they don't gap up. They don't gap up on the open on some bullshit, right? Yeah. Like, like literally Kramer this morning, I, I got caught in my car like five minutes late, which means he comes on at the time when I'm getting out of my car and I get off the call, uh, off the call. So he comes on at eight fifty, and he literally was talking about his bets today. Like he acknowledged <laughs> it. it. It was amazing. I couldn't believe it. He, he was he, somebody was, and then Kernan was quoting that it cost seventy eight bucks a pop on a Viagra pill. Like these guys have completely lost, it, right? Completely, they're, they're unhinged from any any price or signal possible. <laughs> so I, I really enjoyed that. You know, yeah, K- but, KRE but, was a good uh, a good short today. Uh, KRE, yeah, that was good. Yeah, that was that was a really good one. Thanks for that one. I, well, you, I was you, uh, so you uh, was called. Uh, we just said it as well. Yeah, I was just going to say that was the one I was about to hit on, Keith. Was yesterday? You know, you called out a bunch of you know uh, European shorts on the macro show. It was a great great short selling opportunity. Uh, in particular, you did mention EUFN, but you obviously gave our top you know the top five uh, ranked. And EUFN to me was a, a was a, is a classic setup, right? If you're kind of going across the board using multiple of the tools of the toolbox in terms of you know the risk ranges from ETF Pro, along with list actively listening into you know your your updates ahead of the market open on the macro show, um, it was you know wasn't quite at the top end, like right at it. But in, you know to to quote the comment or the question this morning about when you say it's close, what does that mean? Well. You know, close yesterday on on EF, e, EUFN was uh, within about six cents. I think it was uh, not even four. I think it was about four pennies on the top side. So, um, you know, that's pretty darn close. Close, Keith, eh? To uh, to hitting hitting the button on something that we uh, that we like on the short side. So yeah, that's Mike- um, that one. Uh, by the way, on the holdings, what's stealth about that um, is that you get a, a not a free ride. I mean, shorting financials right now is a layup. Um, but shorting European financials, when HSBA, like it's listed in the UK, is is eight percent of the weight, it's the heaviest weight by far. Allianz is like five percent. Zurich Insurance is like four or five. <laughs> yeah. But but it's like um, <laughs> really like Lloyd's Banking's in their top ten holdings. Like it's a ING's in their top ten holdings. So you, you, that's that's Dutch, but the Lloyd's is obviously um, UK as well. So you do get a bit of a flyer on this panic uh, of the Bank of England. In addition, to ju- it's, it's just a juicier flyer, right? I mean, if you're shorting XLF, you're shorting JP Morgan and Berkshire, which is a little tougher dog sledding, but I think that those will be dogs. So enjoy your dog sledding. Um, I just, you know, these are more you know, straight up plays on the British financial system. And somebody just corrected me on that. Sorry. So just to clear the air on the Netflix, it's a hair. It's about five and a quarter of the XLC. I think I must have been thinking about Google. Sorry about that, guys. Um, but thanks for clarifying. Um, uh, 14 Echo. Appreciate that. Uh, all right. Uh, Mitchell, you've been trying to kind of chime in there for a minute. Oh, so no, 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 no. Oh. No, I was just I was looking at Microsoft as one of the top shorts with with its up down ratio. But it, I, I, I mean, you guys were talking about the others. No big deal. Yeah, that one, Mitchell, like on the, uh, I did hedge eye on the prize today and I gave like a, an in-game update on where the market was at, the setup, risk ranges, et cetera, S&P, VIX. And I said, look, I just shorted Google, but I could have shorted Microsoft. They're the same thing today. Gotcha. They're, they're both right at the top end of the range. It was all, again, the if you just think about the behavioral component, it's like, oh my God, look at Netflix. We can't miss the rest of these. Oh, you're going to miss it. All right. Uh, it's, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like you're like the, the the downside in Microsoft into earnings, if if Ami is even remotely close to right, is I think dramatic. Actually, this is one of the few bubble caps that has buckled for real. I mean, you know, Netflix Netflix had gone from seven hundred to two twenty five. Okay, yeah. You don't you don't need to you don't need to do the math on that. It was a fucking train wreck. Um, but you know, Tesla. 410, 409 was its all time high, November the 4th. And it's down 46%, you know, before they reported. And now it's down another 6 or 6%. I mean, Microsoft is, is just getting started. Like, pull back a five year chart of Microsoft. Yeah. 
it, pull back the flag chart got. of everything. Go to my long-term tail, which is three years. Go back to the pre-pandemic and look at where all these things put in their prior all-time highs. Yeah. And everything after that, you'll just see a bubble. That's all that was. It was a big bubble. And for, I know, for Microsoft, I, that number is about 185. Give yeah, it, yeah, yeah, exactly. That's exactly what you should be looking at is these long term mean reversions. I learned one thing as a practical matter not to do the opposite of at Yale in the econ department, and that's long term mean reversion. And Bob Schiller taught that class, and I am forever grateful for it. Because even me, the monkey who went to five different high schools, who like had the lowest SAT score at Yale is like, oh, shit, look at this. All these things kind of go back to where they were. I got it. I got a B plus. <laughs> <laughs> so you're saying there's a chance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and and just to clear, and so Google, just to go follow up, you know, just to keep belaboring that point, they're about seventy six, seventy five. So you know, that's about a twenty four ish percent downside. So again, call it. You know, yeah, so twenty four percent downside from here, uh, from today. You know, so I mean, the, they all look basically the same. I mean, uh, except for Meta. Uh, <laughs> yeah, one hard. of these things does not look like the <laughs> yeah, other. Right. Meta, Meta pre pandemic like peaked the... at two twenty, and then it went to yeah. three eighty, and now it's at one thirty. I mean, yeah, exactly. so yeah, it's it's it's, it's a, the, the damnedest thing these bubbles are. You know, the, the people just have a hell of a time with them. Yeah. Um, awesome. So, uh, you know, Keith, I, I know um, you, you likely kind of have to wrap up, but, uh, you know, as always, re- thoroughly appreciate it when you jump on it. It, it brings a uh, an extra color color to the to the whole notebook review. So appreciate it. And, you know, with that, we're coming up on the hour. So maybe we'll open it up to some folks that haven't jumped up yet to, to ask any questions um, and uh, we'll go from there. I'll yeah, I'll let, guys, I'll, I'll let you guys I'll let you guys I'll let you guys go. Thanks for um, thanks for having me on and. And Robert, again, uh, welcome, welcome to the team. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Looking forward to it. Although, I, I, coach, I did notice that not a lot of people call you coach in the office. So, you know, I, I might, I might, I might be the only one, but that's okay. I'm not going to drop it. <laughs> Robert, I'm going to drop down so you can bring people up. Hey, cool, man. Thanks, Mitchell. Yep. Uh, anonymous, you. Yeah, yeah, use, yeah. I did. Uh, yeah. I just. Kind of a rookie, just want to say thanks. Good piece listening. Um, Appreciate it. Man. That's kind of weird. That wasn't me. Uh, but yeah, uh, the, the Netflix coaching and the macro show this morning uh, was awesome. Uh, I, I didn't ask the question, but it was just great to got me thinking. Um, and one question I had for not Keith, but anyone here that wants to answer it, if they think they know, uh, what's the point? I was just thinking of this. What's the point of shorting like a Fubo? Or beyond meat at five dollars when you know you could short like a Microsoft, right? Because and then is there any risk of just not getting out in time? Like, does that is that actually risky to short like a five dollar stock? And if it delists or something and something happens, do you? I've never shorted junk that's going to go bankrupt before, so I just just thought like if there's any thoughts on that, if it if it makes any sense yeah, at all to Rob, short. Are you able to hear? I can't hear anything. Yeah, I I, I can hear. Yeah, he was asking. Can you hear me, Trent? Trent, can you hear me? Yeah, it could be me. Let me log out and log back in. Yeah, it's really, yeah. Is it does it, right. does it is it ever risky to short like a stock that's yeah could go bankrupt at two three bucks when obviously you could short like a Microsoft or Google or etc. <clears throat> Thanks. Yeah, it's a good question. I mean, I think again, it's it's what I, the way I'd answer it would be um, sizing is incredibly important, right? So uh, you know, it's all about you know, Coach Keith just was mentioning about kind of beta adjusting and and hence why his top ten. You know, looks the way it does, right? It's a, it's a lot of, um, you know, it's, it's well, it's all the primarily all the equities were, were ETFs, right? Other than Apple, um, and that one, you know, Gavin's talked about this many a times, and and you know, Apple basically acts like a a, a macro, um, like a macro ETF position, uh, oftentimes. So, uh, to the short answer to your question, anonymous, is um, yes, right? I mean, it is certainly riskier, but the the you know, if it's going to zero, it's still going to zero, right? So, I mean, from a percentage return standpoint, you know, I have Fubo pulled up, right? So, you know, going to zero means it's, uh, you know, 100% return to the downside versus maybe so, a 20, so, 20 to 25. So, would you wait, if you short that, would you, in your opinion, would you wait for like to get to $1 or two? Or what, at what point would you be like, oh, this is just, it's time to pull a plug? Because is there not a point where if you just don't cover the short, you, you lose your capital? Is that not true? Uh, well, I mean, you're short the stock, so I don't. I mean, you 
likely. Well, yeah, but to, to, to cover, know. you need someone to. I mean, I guess it depends. You on need a bid, right? right? You need interest yeah, in the stock. Get out. Who trades six million shares a day? Sixteen million, sh- or in the yesterday trade. Oh, that's, today. that's anyway, probably the point. I mean, like, I, I'm with you, man. I mean, the the, the way that I uh, look at it is, I certainly uh, I don't typically go after the Fubo, but again, it's like to each of their own, you know. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think. Uh, oh, friend, do you have any? Do you have any other kind of like questions, or Al, or sorry? I I, like I got a thought to share on yeah. that and that is um you know every now and then you see um you see a very low dollar priced stock and you know you you don't see any value in the company whatsoever going forward but in ca- some of these stocks you know they'll have cash on the balance sheet you know their de- their debt's not coming due maybe for a couple of years so you have to keep in mind what is the the call option value of owning the equity I mean, you know, um, you know, you you may think it's worth zero, uh, and maybe it is, but it, you know, in the long run, but somebody will pay uh, out there um, whatever is the the call option value that the thing gets turned around before the debt comes due. So, you know, that that's one thing I would I would be careful about. The other is, um, you know, we you know on the call. You know, we hear from time to time about potential private equity takeouts. You never know when those when one of those is going to come along. And, you know, private equity has got a lot of problems. And uh, I'm sure Keith is rubbing it in to his neighbor from Carlisle, given the stock performance <laughs> the last year. Um, but you never want, know when one of those is coming along. So um, you, I think if you're if you're going to do that, you need to really, really understand the balance sheet. Yeah, it's a great point. I think the takeover risk is certainly something that you got to be paying very close attention to. Um, yeah. Hopefully, hopefully that helps. Yeah, can yeah, I, yeah, yeah, thank you. Yeah, Raj. Yeah, uh, yours, man? yeah just uh, to add to that point, I mean, uh, if you're just like trading, I'm, I'm like a trader. And something like this, like uh, Fubo, I'd be scared that it's a $3 stock. Yeah, I can't short it but I'd be afraid that it could go to seven and a half. That's where my risk is. And like the other gentleman said, you know, there are other issues also. The way I look at some of this stuff is, um, for example, I could take Carvana. So I started shorting Carvana uh, um, maybe around 75 or so. But now it's like 15. I cut most of it, and now I'm going to something else. Like Microsoft would be good. Um the other one I'm looking at now, which is a um, USB corp, but like K, like KRE regional banks are short. So I'm I'm going to take a look at these regional banks. You know, let's take a look at what's high up there. You know, what's going on, and you know, like M and T Bank or something like that. I may take those. So I rather ride ride a uh, hundred dollar stock down to like twenty five or thirty or whatever, as opposed to going from like fifteen or ten down to zero. You know. It, I just find it a little less risk, in my opinion. That's just the way I trade. That's all. Yeah. No, I think it's it's again, it's all it's kind of a personal question, to be honest. Uh, so that's why I'm, I guess I'm struggling a hair answering it. But yeah, it it, it definitely there's there's risk reward. Obviously, anytime you're you're shorting a, a an equity, but certainly, you know, getting the the setup or certainly one that you're comfortable with is is crucial. So I uh, know, Raj, it's, I think that's a really good insight and and. Um, I would, I would, I would lean towards uh, this I, that I trade in a similar fashion, Raj, in terms of, you know, just looking at it inventory, you know, from a risk reward standpoint, and you know, U.S. Bank Corp, you know, U.S.B. Certainly, um, you know, again, if you kind of pull it out to a one or five, you know, five year chart, um, it doesn't look very pretty, but you know, still doesn't mean that I can't get to, uh, you know, thirty bucks from here. All right. Awesome, man. Um, hey. a- Adam, floor is yours. Yeah, I just wanted to address the mechanics of Anonymous's question. Sure. So if he's shorting conventionally as opposed to using puts, and it's at $5, he's going to borrow the share, pay the fee to borrow it, sell it for $5, and if the thing goes bankrupt, no problem. He gets paid up front. If it goes bankrupt, it goes to zero. He doesn't have to buy to cover. I I didn't know that. Thank you. 
Yeah. That's a good point. <laughs> Thanks, Adam. <laughs> All right, so I'll um, or Leo, I saw you're up here as well. Was there any particular question that you had, my man? No, I I, I really didn't. Um, mine was more about like mechanics of uh, the call and kind of how it, it feels like you get rewarded um, uh, for taking notes and and kind of and especially like in in the short side of things uh, when you look at like some of the shit goes. Um, you know, you look at like plug power, um, it's squeezed up to 30 and you kind of kept waiting for it to crack. And now it seems like it wants to go down five to 10% every day right now. But I'm, I'm, you know, a lot of those are in like, obviously the most shorted basket, right? So you put Carvana's in there, um, a firm buy now, pay never. Um, it just seems like you get rewarded for listening to Steiner and you get rewarded for taking notes and, you know, you're listening for bank earnings coming up and you see allies got earnings coming up. And I think that's why, Carvana crap today because uh, uh, Allies earnings were terrible. It seemed like you know at least from what the the street reported. So they you know the fear becomes that Carvana gets to zero quicker. Um, so it's just a very interesting. I don't know uh, if anyone else has noticed that. It just seems like you know I've been listening to the call now for a year, and it might not like right away be an idea that you can put to use, but it, you can kind of file back to it. And even if it's not being talked about anymore, you kind of got it in the back of your uh, your notebook there, going, oh look at that, this is perfect for you know. Uh, I've, I've been looking for a buy now pay never shit go right so and uh, um i mean like another one's like upstart right it's not one they talk about but it's similar to the type of credit right when this credit gets squeezed you just kind of put it down as a note and you see it, it moves a lot so you obviously very very small portions um and, and you cover after you get your move but um you know if, if you know where credit's going and you see where these bigger credit card companies are struggling with you know with balances going up and you start seeing late fees coming in you know, you you got to imagine these these ones that are not doing as good at credit checks are are, are going to do terrible. So that was kind of my only uh, um, thought on the whole thing. So um, I didn't know if um, obviously it's been great listening for a year and and, and taking notes and learning a ton and all that. And uh, Keith was on there a minute ago, and I wanted to thank him personally. It's been uh, the confidence that it breeds uh, in, in 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 following the process and you know doing what I do. Um, you know, it, it makes this, this pullback much better than the last one. And, you know, it's been 18 months, right? So I've experienced the majority of the bull market and then this, this bear market and it's, it's worked out fantastic. I'm, I'm blown away by it. So. That's awesome. I'm thrilled to hear it and I couldn't agree more. So <laughs> well done. It does, uh, does take the active listening part though, eh, Leo. So uh, it sounds like you're definitely doing that. And, and I'd encourage anybody uh, else to, 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 to perform similarly. So I think it, it definitely, a lot of uh, a lot of reward can can be taken as as Leo said, kind of even if it's just following away, right? Oh yeah, what was that company again, right? And then you come back to it, and all of a sudden it's like, oh yeah, it was a firm. That thing's a piece of shit. <laughs> uh, awesome. All right, well we'll um, I'll open it up. You know, give it a couple more minutes. You know, I don't, uh, Gavin. I don't know if you had anything else or or or, or trend anything on your minds right now, but um, you know, I'll open it up to a couple more questions if anybody's got that. Otherwise, we can. Um, call it night and call it a very successful first uh, weekly notebook review under the new hedge eye umbrella. Hey Rob, first of all, yeah. congratulations. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Celebrations are in order <laughs> next time when we meet. So definitely heartiest congratulations for uh, your dedication and eventually. As hey he Robert, said, thank you so much for hosting. Uh, these are always great. I hate missing uh, as many as I do, but I always learn something every time I come on. So, uh, congrats again to you and, uh, okay. look forward to, uh, being on with folks in the future. And, you know, hopefully I'll, you know, get myself up North before long and, and, uh, get to meet you in person. That'd be awesome, Al. I appreciate it. Thanks everybody. Great to Absolutely. hear from you. All right. Yeah. Hey, sorry. Back to you, bud. Yeah. So, uh, from a standpoint of a few of the observations I've had, uh, we are getting into earnings season. I try to be a bit uh, lighter on some of the earnings, uh, not all. Uh, some of them I do play the probabilistic, uh, rolling the dice, uh, uh, depending upon what the setup is. Uh, from a setup perspective, we have Adobe coming up, uh, which most likely is going to be a disaster. Uh, we already saw the disaster that unraveled with it with the Figma acquisition. I think this uh, quarter 
uh, they would most likely have a guidance related issue. Uh, currency headwinds are big. Anyone having more than 50% revenues outside of US is definitely going to have that challenge. Uh, we'll see that in Amazon, most likely. Amazon never gives guidance, so from a uh, uh, meaning a uh, true guidance, right? Um, I think uh, they are going to have further currency issue. Microsoft already did some in May. Uh, they took a bath in the name of currency. But that time, their stock was 275. I think this time when they say they'd have a currency issue, uh, it would be rather interesting. From a signal standpoint, uh, some of these names are uh, not playing well. Um, also, we, we are having some interesting movement in some of the semiconductor stock uh, stocks. So I'm actually focused a whole lot on trying to short some of the bounces in these uh, cyclical uh, commodity, uh, commodity-like stocks, uh, which are semiconductors. I know people don't look at it that way, but these uh, companies tend to be stuck with fixed uh, investments when the cycle goes by. And people may argue saying that, hey, there's on one hand, there's a shortage. Oh, auto companies are wanting the chips and they're not getting the chips, etc. But uh, you should also understand there's a reason why NVIDIA is where it's at. There's a reason why AMD is where it's at. They're saddled with a ton of inventory. Uh, and when I say inventory, it's just the fixed costs and they're slashing prices on the inventory. Um, on Somebody mentioned just now about the credit quality and earlier also I mentioned that, hey, there's tables. Uh, which are available in 10 Qs and 10 Ks. I want to build upon that really quickly. Uh, if you want to come up with a short list of uh, stocks, I think uh, six months ago I discussed about a strategy about taking the holdings of JNK and HYD and trying to find the equal in equity. Uh, that strategy played out actually really well, but that is on the equity side. Um, and then definitely the cheap puts on JNK and HYD really help. But one should also now start looking at the banks. Some of these banks, uh, when you dig into their 10 Qs and 10 Ks, you'll find that the kind of haircuts that they're going to start having to take as they come out with their results, not this quarter. Because this quarter, if you look at, say, for example, if you go to US Bank and look at their earnings uh, call, you'll find that in their earnings call, they kept on painting a rosy picture. However, at the end of the call, when some of the analysts called out the... CEO threw in his towel saying, yeah, borrowing cost is going to go up and this is going to happen. Plus, they're doing some merger, right, with some uh, MUFG Union Bank. So U.S. Bank is um, going to have trouble in her book that they're going to get from bank. Now, granted, that's just 10% accretive uh, and EPS, they're saying it's 6% accretive, but they're going to have a book value markdown because of that acquisition. Um, so looking for these kind of opportunities, I think some of the banks are going to give us some juice. One of the banks that has given me a lot of juice on the short side has been SBNY. So Sam Bravo, Nancy Yellow, uh, that stock. And then uh, there's a couple of other banks. We were talking, I know we were talking about Upstart and Affirm earlier. Uh, I think some of the banks are where some of these bad books are hidden. Uh, that also applies to certain insurance companies. If you look at their books, especially on the PNC side, they're over-earning right now because the rate cycle is hardening. And mm -hmm. next three quarters, we're going to have insurance companies have going to have trouble with PNC side especially. So those are some of my observations. Um, I, I don't know, Rob, if uh, the international and currency observations were already made, so I won't get into those. But uh, UK is, you know, short the rip on every bounce, Germany is, Italy is, Austria is, um, at least in my book. Yep, yep, no, couldn't agree more. And, and it, yeah, it was covered earlier. But yeah, no, awesome trend, as always, appreciate it. Um, so thank you. Arthur and Aaron, you guys both jumped up, or Arthur, I'll, I'll go to you first. How are you tonight, my, my man? Uh, I'm doing well, can you hear me? We can, Arthur, absolutely, thank you. Oh, good. Um, let's see. I just wanted to uh, point out something that I read this morning. Uh, in the early look, Keith puts on paper some things that he said in the um, 
uh, in the macro show over and over and over again, but he, he wrote it down and I printed it out and I've cut it out and I put it on my wall. It, it's really the, the, the simplest uh, trading strategy having to do with the high end of the risk range and a uh, 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 declining eyeball uh, discount. Um, uh, it, it, it's really a primer in how to make money in, uh, uh, on the long side and the short side. Um, so I just wanted to, to point that out because it was the first time I'd seen it on paper. It might be in uh, Hedgeye University, but it was very succinct and I appreciate it a lot. Uh, the second thing I wanted to point out is um, I hear people uh, trading uh, uh, quite a lot of options and Keith do does it and um, uh, short-term options, and uh, I just wanted to uh, caution people about um, um, about having a very disciplined approach to doing that. Um, you know, you uh, one of my philosophies is when I trade options, uh, and it basically goes, and this comes from years and years of losing money, um, is when when you have the profit, take it. Right, coulda, woulda, shoulda, uh, I coulda made more. Uh, you might wanna have some uh, oscillators in there that give you an indication of overbought, oversold, or, or, or whatever. But uh, something else that Keith says is keep moving the inventory. Mm -hmm. This is a guy who's been through a lot of bear markets and, uh, and I've traded a few of them, but you can get really hurt uh, getting wedded to short positions. And you'll notice he's constantly moving the inventory. And that's basically an options philosophy is uh, when you trade these things, you gotta, you, you gotta keep moving. Uh, and you've gotta have some discipline and a definite process for how you're gonna go about using those. Uh, so, um, you know, I've got tremendous respect for Keith uh, because I notice in real-time alerts, this guy gets top tick. And, uh, you know, when he, when he covers a short, it's, it's often on a bottom tick. It's not 100% of the time, but, you know, he's really very good at trading uh, uh, short positions. So keep moving the inventory. Keep, you know, having a process. Uh, don't get wed to uh, any one position. Um you know, keep moving uh, the position sizing. And and I've had really good success this year because I basically moved from uh, a 1% short position to a 3% short position. And I go back, back and forth based on those uh, eyeball discounts and premiums and uh, risk ranges and some other tools I have to uh, approximate the risk ranges uh, in in my own, they are based on mathematics, but uh, just some tools uh, that I've developed uh, over the years. So I just wanted to point that out. A tremendous respect. He put it on paper. Uh, it's easy to follow. It's hard to do because of FOMO. And uh, <laughs> I, 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 I just wanted to, uh, and, and your, uh, um, uh, your position sizing and, you know, these beta adjusted uh, positions. I mean, there, there's a lot going on there. This uh, and and he wonders how he can be a better coach. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, this is the toughest game uh, to teach that I can think of, other than playing golf. Mm -hmm. uh, and golf is not a game of perfect, and neither is this. So um, uh, I just wanted to express some of those thoughts and uh, pass it along. No, it's awesome, Arthur. I always. I thoroughly enjoy when you when you come up uh, to share your insight and and I couldn't again I couldn't agree more and and it, it's one of those things where the the inventory is one of the biggest pieces that you know that uh, it's not even recently you know picked up on but certainly deploying it is is harder because uh, you you do get you know you, you see the potential loss or or the gain and uh, and the book right and you're like okay well this could go up or you know this could recover and. And blah blah blah, right? But uh, you know, if it's going against you, the signal from you know to tie it into the beginning, right? In terms of signal strength and and having that be one of the, the biggest you know drivers in terms of 
where you allocate that inventory and where you allocate that capital. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's crucial to just kind of stick to, to stick, almost keep it simple, right? Stick, stick to the signal strength, whatever that is to, to your point, you know, Arthur, in terms of, you know, using oscillators or any other kind of indicators, whatever that is, you know, find out, figure out your process, you know, uh, kind of with the, with the core bones of, of the hedge eye process, right. And, and, and add your little, um, your little two cents or whatever works for you and, and, and go from there and, and try to j- and, and, and kind of stick with it. Right. And I think you, you'll find that the results will speak for themselves, but uh, no, it was a phenomenal early look. I couldn't agree more, Arthur. Always learning, always learning every day. Uh, well, congratulations Aaron. to you. Oh, thank you. Thank you, sir. <laughs> are you, Hey, Arthur, are you going to be, are you going to be at the Dallas regional by any chance or, uh, no, I, no, okay. uh, I hadn't, I hadn't planned on it. But, All right. No so, problem. Uh, well, hopefully we'll, I'll get to meet you at one of these conferences, whether it be Dallas or, uh, maybe, or, or maybe, maybe next Miami. year in yeah, maybe, maybe uh, Miami. <laughs> uh, maybe, maybe Miami. I don't know when that is, but, uh, but I am going to Florida for some time this winter. So awesome. uh, that, yeah, that's a, a possible. Awesome, Rob, man. when is Miami? I think it said uh, blue. Michael announced that it was Southern Florida. Sorry, did I get to let the cat out of the bag? Okay, okay, um, no worries. Yeah, so it's in. Uh, I, I got to double check the date, so I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say anything about the date yet. Uh, but I, but I think uh, I know it's Miami. I thought it was January, but it could be February. Um, I know they were kind of putting the final touches on the announcement and the the website and stuff like that. But look for that to come out in the next uh, next few weeks. Officially, yeah, or like officially in terms of being able to sign up uh dallas regional is uh is on like donkey kong uh that's on the 10th of november so in a couple of weeks uh, so anybody who's interested again i know there's folks from all over the country kind of flying in uh but it's it's a one-day event down in in dallas you've got a number of analysts that will be speaking and giving kind of presentations and taking q a uh keith's doing a um a a, a macro show uh, t- you know, type presentation as well. That that's only for uh, the folks in the in the room. So it's a it's a very unique um, uh, conference. I know many. You know, the first one was L- uh, was out in L. A. in September. That was and and people absolutely loved it. So I know there's been a number of folks that are went went to the L. A. one that are uh, making the trip to Dallas and and I suspect we'll probably make the trip to the next one in Southern Florida. I know it's in Miami. I can just tell you, say it's in Miami. Uh, I don't think I'm going to get in trouble for that trend. Uh, but then again, you know, we'll see. Maybe I'll hear, maybe I'll get a an earful tomorrow. Uh, <laughs> uh, Aaron, you you've been uh, kind enough to to kind of wait. Um, welcome. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, I just found you guys recently, so jumped on the you know, spaces tonight and I caught the tail end of it. So I heard a little bit, oh. uh, some questions about shorting and things like that. So I can speak to that a little, um, awesome. but I really appreciate what you guys are doing with this. It's uh seems like a good group and you guys definitely know your stuff as far as a uh, hedge eye and the way you trade. I, I'm more of a technical trader. I actually started out with small caps and grew my account until I could trade large caps um, and then transitioned into options. And now we're, basically you know sellers of options um awesome so i think yeah like last november everything was topping out we went all out of our long positions so you know tesla was 2500 before the split shopify was 1700 before the split um went all out of those long and immediately shorted them Uh, i heard one one uh, guy asking about fubo um we had shorted that around the same time as well, but we went in, you know, thirty dollars to about ten dollars was my final covers, and now it's nice. down another sixty percent. So <laughs> it really is just, you know, how you feel about it and your own personal method and where you want to take the profit, um, and also how long are you going to sit with the position, right? So, yep, yep, yeah, absolutely. And uh, Aaron, just and for those kind of that are catching in here, coming in here. Um, the, this is being recorded, so you'll be able to find this, I'll pin, I'll pin the, the final recording, uh, to my profile. So you can, you know, again, follow me at, at Hedgei RJM. Uh, so you, that's the new handle. Everything's going to be kind of, uh, will be run from, from this handle interactions, spaces, and, and again, look for, obviously we've been, we've done the week of book review and, and a number of, other, you know, a number of other spaces. So look for more of that type of engagement and content and that kind of thing as well. So. 
a um, lot of lot of lot of fun new new things happening on the um, on the horizon, and and yeah, so that that's uh, uh, so yeah, so good you know good good call out, Aaron. Uh, congrats on on growing the account and, and welcome aboard. So um, yeah, awesome man. Uh, yeah, think, thank uh, you. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Pokey and Think Stack, bro, you guys both jumped on. How are you? Hey, man. Hey, this means we don't have to tip you anymore, right? <laughs> That's right, buddy. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> no, I just wanted to hop. I just wanted to. <laughs> I just wanted to hop up to offer my congratulations and to let you know I just hopped on another website. Head Drive Miami is Tuesday, January twenty fourth, and it's at the uh, Marriott Marquis in downtown. There you go. Appreciate it. And, and it's uh, it's the largest region. I know it's the largest. I, I, I can't remember the number I thought. I think it, I think it was double capacity, if, if memory serves, or pretty close to it. So it's going to be a really fun one, obviously, in, in, in late January. So perfect time to be in Miami, uh, whether you live in, in San Fran or, or uh, well, West Coast, East Coast, and everywhere in between. It'll be, it should be a really good time. Uh, yeah, so George, uh, you're, you're out of a job here at the end. Uh, Thanks, Zach Grow. Welcome, my man. Hey Robert, can you guys hear me? Okay, we can, we can. Welcome. Hey, first of all, congrats again, man. Oh, uh, thanks, buddy. That's, if there that's... was one person to deserve the position, I could not think of a better name than you. Wow. So, thank that's you very thank kind you for this community, and thank you for all you've been doing. And congrats to you and to Hedai for pulling you in. Uh, yeah, just uh, just going to echo some uh, some of the points that that Gavin and Mitch raised earlier in the discussion. Uh, it, to me, it, it, it all feels like, a, not feels like, it all looks like a USD and the yield trade. And that's where if you just go by the strongest signal, you know, XLE being on the long side and just US dollar being, being the king in terms of just, uh, right now it's consolidating, but long, long dollar, short yen, short euro, and, and, um, and basically the yield trade, that plus the rate sensitive sectors like XLU and XLRE has just been just been a gangbanger. Um, mm-hmm. XLU since it pivoted uh, when the yields started to write go back up, this basically with the exception of the bounce of the last two days, you can just keep hammering that short back and forth again. And uh, and along with that, you got the gold short, and with the VIX above 30s, you can add in GDX as well. Want to be a little DJ and add it add GDXD or U, you know, if you want a 3X leverage and you have a portfolio right there. And there you go. That's yeah. all. No, no, no. It's, uh, you're, you're spot on, my man. And and it, it's sometimes it's as simple as that. And other times it gets a little more complicated, right? So, you know, it's, uh, I, I kind of stick towards keep it simple, right? And, and the signal strength is, is really... I really don't care about anything else, to be perfectly honest, right? It's uh, that's the, from what I've found over the last two years. It's it's the biggest thing that that helps guide me, and and you know, going back to Arthur's point in terms of inventory, and just you know, again, you don't have to be trading it every day, but like when you when you see those levels that where you know whether it's pushing the top end of the risk range or kind of you know you know coming down towards the low end. You know that that's where you just you know you, you stick to your process and 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 you, you execute on those on those kind of quote quote kind of fringes, um and and you, you know you make sure you you size them up and and you kind of have you know appro- appropriately right you size them up and size them down you know when when it when it makes sense so it's it's right. a good call up yeah yep it, George you got your your hand up yeah I just wanted to let everyone know if you got value tonight. Please click on Robert's circle. <laughs> click on his profile. <laughs> and there's George, a little link to, like a chain we don't, we don't that says hedgeye.com. Oh, Go yes, to yes. hedgeye.com, <laughs> yeah, subscribe, exactly. and make sure you're supporting Robert. That's right. That's right. You know, uh, that's actually what I was going to say. I was like, if you, if, you, if you are interested and you aren't a subscriber, you know, email support at, at hedgeye.com and, and we'll be able to. Yeah, you know, to hook you up, and in particular for the for the regional events, um, those you know, for many here that are listening in, we were at Hedge Out Live, uh, that that are up here speaking. That's where I met George and and Trend and Gavin. Um, you know, number obviously those are just the ones that are up here, but um, the it, it was phenomenal, right? And the conversations, you know, outside and over kind of, you know, the breakfast and and lunch, and then you know, uh, drinks and all that kind of stuff. It's just you know, being around people that 
think like you and, and sort of uh, want to be better and want to execute and are accountable and wanting to learn and grow and, and just, um, yeah, just, just really kind of, you know, try to be the, their best selves. That's, that's what it's all about. You get, you know, in Dallas, you'll, you'll have a room of, uh, I think it's about 110 or 120 folks um, in terms of uh, max capacity there. So you'll have, you know, hundred plus people um, that, that will echo that exact, those exact feelings. So it's, it's always great to kind of be around people um, like that because in this, you know, in these markets, one, they're incredibly challenging um, and these are the big leagues and we're trying to, you know, we do it, we do it differently. So it's, uh, it's nice to be able to pick, pick people's brains that uh, execute in a similar manner. I know Gavin and, and, and George, I know you, oh, Trent too. I mean, you guys, it, it was the number one takeaway, wasn't it boys? Yeah, it was a <clears throat> great uh, event uh, for several reasons. Number one, um, I got to put a face to the names, you know, I used to attend Rob's uh, spaces from uh, January or maybe December, yeah. or November, or December, right? So yeah, that's yeah. when you started last year. And then <clears throat> um, we did that uh, one long session, uh, which is recorded on uh, Rob's YouTube channel mm -hmm. uh, and posted for anyone interested in my process. Uh, I'd given some sort of an overview. And then from there, it started, you know, we started having Mike T in January, right around the same time yeah. when uh, Josh Steiner did that uh, uh, big, uh, uh, you know, he was actually uh, on the macro show for 30 minutes. And the statistics he showed were so astonishing. And I was like, man, if this is true, I, I, I actually check through all my data pipelines, which run through my AWS um, on, on an Amazon cloud, um, ran all the statistics again and again, and it, it was all confirming what Joss had already done. And um, I was like, wow, I totally missed all of this, right? So this was extremely valuable because the last two years of gift that the Fed gave was going to go away <laughs> if I didn't act. <laughs> I immediately um, acted, made uh, first myself pretty neutral uh, to flat. And then within three to four days, I started taking some minor ac active short positions. Then Mike T came along on one of these spaces and he gave his uh, elaborate setup related uh, description. I would highly recommend anyone interested in going back and looking at those uh, from Rob's uh, YouTube channel. And then finally, when we uh, decided to meet by the time we met in May, uh, we had already seen a bunch of action in terms of stock prices plummeting down. Uh, we also started seeing all the fiasco and the crypto crash, uh, which started coming out for all of these stable coin and God knows what kind of coins we have over there, right? Like there's 20,000 different types of coins in there. Um, and then um, at that point of time, every, everything seemed like it's culminating. We think differently as a community, as a group. We are much more data driven. Uh, there's no, there's not as much gut feeling. It's much more based on experience um, and skills and back tests and whatnot. So it was very, uh, <clears throat> very exciting to meet people. Uh, I spoke, I met Simone, had a great discussion about REITs and real estate in general. Uh, Simone had a few of his. Uh, Read uh, managers uh, who who manage funds uh, which trade in REITs. Um, they had some great takeaways. Uh, at the same time, ran into so many RIAs who brought in different perspectives. Um, so very valuable meeting uh, everyone mm -hmm. in May. So definitely, you know, um, after that I had a life event, so <laughs> I haven't yeah. had a chance to go anywhere. But uh, I would definitely, yeah. you know, I'd love to. Uh, visit places. Uh, these these are yeah. great events. I would highly encourage anyone who has not been to one to be to one. No, well, that's the other piece too, right? I mean, uh, we were able to meet your wife, Trend, and and uh, you know, yeah, you've you, you since had had a baby and had your first baby. So it's it's quite yeah. quite amazing bring bring all these wonderful relationships on uh, um, that that we've created online, uh, kind Indeed. of offline, right? So, Indeed. Indeed. Uh, so again, not yet. Uh, so you know, uh, just going to kind of I guess finish a little bit where where we started, but just wanted to thank. Again, all, all of um, all the supporters, all of the listeners, it, it, it's really these spaces wouldn't happen without y'all. Uh, so just wanted to, to, to thank you for, for that. And, you know, um, 
it's it's truly humbling and uh, and I'm honored to be able to kind of be you know a uh, a, a a proud member of, of Hedge Eye Nation and, and now I get to kind of help create and and hopefully you guys are gonna you know be very uh, yeah just gonna thoroughly enjoy kind of the the new content that's kind of on the horizon so so look out for it and as I mentioned I think the you know if if uh, if you guys do watch anything on YouTube or, or what have you go. Go follow that, you know, subscribe to the Hedge Eye uh, YouTube channel. Um, that's where the these these podcasts we can get get posted as well as various other um, kind of podcast avenues. But, uh, you know, the thought is kind of, maybe, you know, perhaps doing some live streams and, and some other kind of you know, content like that. So, um, you know, it's, uh, it's it's just the beginning here. Day three for me within the, the, the hallowed halls of, of Hedge Eye and a lot, lot more to come. So appreciate everybody's um, support and, and I'm, I'm, I'm very grateful for it. So. I'm um, looking forward to uh, taking these next steps together. Rock on, man. We'll have a good night. Right, Are we calling it? Thank you. Yeah, we're calling it, Gavin. Call it. All right. It's, you guys have a good one. It was a good hour and a half, eh, buddy? That was good. <laughs> that was good. All right. Thanks, everyone. Have a good night.